Hey guys, how you going? Blake here with another video. Today I'm super pumped to bring you a species spotlight. This is a super unique fish that I'd never seen before in person and I stumbled across in my recent fish store tour at Nature Aquariums. If you didn't have time to catch that one, pop a card up above, you can check that one out. Um, it was a really cool store and as we're about to see, had some really interesting, unique fish. Come along for the journey, let's jump straight into the video. So the fish I picked up and the one that we're going to do the species spotlight today, if for some reason you're no good at reading titles or having a look at um, thumbnails, well, they're the platinum half beaks. I picked up five of them and they're really cool, really interesting and today we're going to run through everything you'll need to know to care for these little guys. So to kick off straight from the bat, uh, there are plenty of half beaks out there. Uh, the other common one is the Celebes half beak that does get quite a bit larger, but these are wrestling uh, half beaks, also known as Dermogenes pusilla for all you Latin nuts out there, um, which I know there's tons of them. <laughs> in the wild, these guys do occur naturally in a lot of uh, slow moving areas. They're top dwelling fish and you'll see them hanging out right at the top like a little crocodile hanging out ready for food. Um, but yeah, they come from a lot of areas such as uh, Laos, Indonesia, Vietnam and the, and the like. So. Um, with that, they're going to be tropical fish. Uh, so they're going to want to live in uh, temperatures of about 24 to 28 degrees Celsius and 75 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit. Being live bearers, they will appreciate a bit of hardness in the water. So you drop in a bit of Texas holly rock or uh, dry base rock and you'll have a good time. They do enjoy a bit of salt, but it's not necessary. So um, if you don't want to keep plants, then feel free to put in some salt and they'll appreciate that too. They do naturally sort of uh, gravitate towards the brackish uh, areas so um, it's not unusual for them to live with salt in the water in the wild. They're a small size, uh, females get a maximum of seven centimeters and males five centimeters so it is cool to know that I guess the females are going to get bigger. That is because they're a live bearer so they need to accommodate <laughs> for growing live babies inside them so that's the main reason for them getting a bit bigger. As with a lot of top dwelling fish, they're going to appreciate low flow so they can ha really hang up there and uh, you're also going to want to make sure you've got tight lids on there because as with a lot of top dwellers, they are pretty good at jumping to sort of, you know, get those bugs and stuff that are going to land on the top of the water. So keep your lids tight on the uh, wrestling half beak tank, that's for sure. They can be kept together in groups. Males will spar with each other, but um, it's not too big of a blood bath or anything like that so don't really worry about uh, keeping in a colony just make sure if you're going to keep tank mates with it uh, first of all you're probably less likely to get babies uh, get growing growing up and also just make sure that whatever fish you put with them aren't going to predate on the um, on the half beaks as well because they're not going to get that big so um, there will be a bit of a sitting duck up the top of the water column if you put a tank bait in that'll have a mouth big enough to be able to uh, handle that sort of uh, size fish. Uh, being a top dweller, it's also good to feed um, top dwelling foods. Um, I've had a lot of success with live baby brine shrimp, uh, vinegar eels and that sort of thing, but um, just be mindful of feeding foods that are going to stick at the top of the water column. Uh, Hikari vibrobites have also gone down well in terms of a prepared food. They may be a bit iffy on taking flakes and pellets at first, so you might need to um, soak these in the bloodworm juice or something similar to get that happening over time. But I did find that my particular ones did take Hikari vibrobites instantly. They are plant safe, so there's no dramas there. Um, and being flighty and a top dweller, it's a good idea to put surface um, plants in here. I personally have them in with some Amazon frog bit, and they seem to do well. It seems to sort of provide a bit of cover for them and it'll also increase the chances of uh, babies surviving in the future. In terms of babies surviving, they do sometimes predate on the babies, but so long as they're well fed, they are unlikely to go and chase their babies. So um, just make sure that you're putting in food regularly and you should have a fair bit of success breeding these little guys. It is important to uh, give these guys really high quality foods because unfortunately what happens with a lot of births of um, new wrestling half beaks is that they actually are stillbirths. So 
many scientists believe that this is because of a lack of vitamin D and other essential nutrients in the diet. So um, as often as you can, put in some really highly beneficial live foods and the highest quality prepared foods that you can. Gestation is between three to six weeks, which is pretty typical of other live bears that we see. And that variance is going to depend on the temperature that you keep them at. Higher temperatures are going to mean higher metabolism and faster growth in most cases. Being live bearers, the babies will be able to uh, accept foods like brine shrimp straight away. So um, no dramas there about having to get some really micro foods to feed uh, as a first food source in this case. So there's going to be three main ways that we're going to tell the sex difference between these wrestling half beaks. And similar to guppies and platies, um, their you know, relative live bearer, well, they have uh, gonopodiums, which is you know, the sexual organs that the males have, while male half beaks have uh, what's called andropodiums, uh, which are a similar sort of thing. Um, if you're a little bit confused, as I was at first, I'll be popping up a few pictures on the screen which should um, explain the difference, and um, we'll put a bit of a side-by-side, -side, so it should be fairly clear. The males are going to have a red dorsal fin, which is not going to be the case with females. And finally, the males are going to be a fair bit smaller than females. Uh, they'll max out at about five centimeters or uh, two inches, and females will max out at about seven uh, centimeters, almost three inches. So they're going to be quite a bit smaller. So there you go, guys. Uh, that's my introduction to the uh, wrestling half beak. I really find these platinum varieties to be super uh, good looking and I just couldn't pass up picking up five of them for myself so uh, if you do come across these don't be afraid to pick them up and give them a go uh, I've found them to be really quite rewarding so far just make sure if you do keep them in a tank keep that tank really up high because uh, it just won't do them justice to be below um, eye level essentially because they really really do hang up at the top of the water column the entire time just cruising around like a little platinum twig so um, let me know down below what you think of these little guys or if you'd be keen to give them a go in the future and also let me know if that you are from the future and you're seeking out this video in a search because you're not quite sure on the demand so um, if you like the video please like subscribe and all that fun stuff and I'll catch you on the next one thanks for watching